In this week's photo breakdown, we're gonna take a look at this exciting image of all these paint cans exploding and this number six made entirely from paint. I'm gonna show you how it was done. So if we take a look at these images, um, let's start off with this one. We'll explore the amazing detail that's been captured, frozen in time, all the splashes of liquid paint flying through the air, beautiful textures. You can even see really dig deep into the textures within these swirls of paint that are flying out of these tins, all captured at this very brief instance in time. We also have a, another one, which is actually a montage of two or three images to form this number six, but again with these beautiful details and all these strings of paint, this lovely glow of gradient lighting across that sheet or tube of paint, and then working all our way around there. So let's take a look at my lighting diagram and how the shots were created. And then uh, we'll move into a few more details. So I've got the two images on the left here. So if we start, we have the camera here. In this case, it was uh, Hasselblad medium format H6. These images were actually shot for the launch campaign for that camera. And uh, the reason the bright orange was used was because the camera was launched with a bright orange shutter button. So hence the, uh, the brief for the campaign. We have a blue wall background, which was the actual back of the studio there painted in blue with matte emulsion paint. And the blue color that you can see in the photos on the left here was very specifically selected because it is the opposite color of the orange that we knew we were going to use in the paint tins and therefore the juxtaposition and the um, perceived contrast would be greater to the viewer. Basically, it would stand out more against that particular blue background. We have an overhead scrim, which is going to be used to control the lighting. And then we used these, uh, what we called ski ramps, which were these ramps that we um, custom made. Um, we developed some uh, original ones out of MDF to test the slope and the curve. And then when we were happy with them, we had those made out of acrylics, um, clear acrylics in a sort of smooth, shiny finish. And we actually used um, silicon spray to make them smoother and shinier on the slope. And the idea was that the ramps were made so that the tin of paint would fit between them, it could be released by an assistant, it would slide down the ramp, and then they would take off in the air. And those ramps were carefully positioned so that the paint pots, which you can see there, as they slid down the ramps, they would end up in exactly the right place to collide together. We have an overhead light through the scrim. So the scrim is above the set. The paint pots are gonna to crash together here. And we have an overhead light on the left and one over on the right. Now these are bare bulb so that they create a radial gradient glow through the scrim a graduated glow that gives a lovely, soft, smoothed out light rather than a homogenous softbox uh, look to the light. And then underneath was a silver reflector. So you have the light coming from above through the scrim with the gradient radial glow, going to hit the action of where the paint pots are colliding, but underneath we used a large silver reflector. In this case, it was just a piece of polished stainless steel because uh, it was quite big and that would bounce some of that gradient lighting from above back up for under lighting to catch the sides of the silver paint tins as necessary. Further to that, we used a specialized modifier called a fluter. As I specialized, it's a large Fresnel lens type of modifier, often available uh, from rental houses or various brands uh, make their own. 
and uh, there was a piece of foam board to protect that from getting covered in paint and then the Fresnel gives a beautiful spotlight onto the wall which you can see I'm activating here and you can set obviously the exposure of that and the diffusion of the glow or the spread of the glow how soft or hard it is you can control that with the zoom feature on the Fresnel and that allowed me to put that lovely gradual sort of gentle glow behind the action on the wall there um, to just bring your attention more to the center of the image and that's a technique that I use quite regularly and you'll see on Carl Taylor Education how we use uh, Fresnel lights uh, for various reasons. Now the travel of the cans down the ski ramps you can see here and that means we've got a hit zone if you like just about there so that's exactly where we know the tins of paint were going to collide based on our tests, based on carefully moving the ski ramps to the right position and the assistance releasing the, ski, uh, the paint tins at exactly the right moment um, together at the same time. And then finally we have the camera view. So the camera view is seeing through that zone and we know that basically when those cans come together and they collide they will be in the center of the shot by and large for the most part and then we have to figure out well how are we going to capture that exact moment because it's a very brief moment and that's done with a sound activated trigger in this case it was the uh, myops trigger and that receives the sound from the bang of the tins together and that sound then activates the camera and the flashes to fire. Now, interestingly, that sound, and we do a lot of work with uh, triggers and sound activation or laser activation, uh, as you'll see on our platform, but uh, that sound, sometimes the trigger can actually be too fast. So what you have to do is set in a delay time on the trigger so that rather than it catching the moment when the tins hit, we actually needed maybe a 30 millisecond delay to allow some of the paint to escape from the tins to give the final result that you can see there. And then if we move over to the uh, number six shot, that was captured slightly differently. In fact, we have some clips, but basically what I was having to do was to use a glass or a container and then swirl that container as fast as I could to make curved loops of paint, if you like, in the capture zone. And then I had to do this repeatedly to make as many as I could um, as close as possible to decent circles or large curve shapes. And I think it required about three different images to then combine together to make the final number six in post-production. So the number six shot that you can see was obviously created with a, a multiple of two or three images to, to make that as a composite. But the actual key main shot there with the paint tin with the orange paint coming out of it, that was captured in camera just from the collision of the paint cans coming together at that particular point. And we'll just finish off showing you a couple of clips from another video where that is all happening in slow motion. And if you're wondering why my hand is opening and closing to indicate something, that is because we're using a sound trigger, so I couldn't physically, verbally tell the assistants when to release the cans, so we had to do it all by using hand signals so that the only noise that was going to be made was the cans colliding together to allow the capture to happen. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks very much for watching.